Hi, Chris Gibson from Icon Collective here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Live9's user library. The user library is the default location where Live9 saves its presets, clips, and audio effects. Let's have a look. As with many things in life, organization is key when it comes to producing music. That's why within my user library, I like to create subfolders. If we're unsure how to access the user library, it's quite simple. All we need to do is open up the browser, and here it is. A basic example of saving something into the user library might be just changing the parameters on a compressor. Here's an example. There's a particular vocalist I'm working with named Brandon, and for the most part, we can use similar compression parameters, at least to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and title this Brandon's Compression Settings. I can then go to the top right corner of this device, hit the image that looks somewhat like a floppy disk, and it's going to save it right into my user library so I can recall it on future sessions. And there it is. User library, presets, audio effects, compressor, Brandon's compression settings. A slightly more interesting approach might be to actually group different devices together into an audio effects rack and save them for future use on sessions. This is easily achieved by simply selecting different devices whilst holding Shift, hitting Command G will group them, and then we can actually save the audio effects rack. So after using Live9 for a while, your user library might become overcrowded or overpopulated with different presets and effects. That's why within my user library, I create subfolders. Here's an example. Within different audio effect racks, I separate them into time-based effects such as delays and reverbs, dynamic effects such as compression, DJ style racks, different ideas for vocal effects, and even wildcards for glitch and randomness. More than just presets of devices, we can actually store clips into our user library. Sometimes when I'm writing a song, I'll write a chord progression and then actually realize, hey, this song might not be going anywhere, but I really did spend some time on the progression. That's why I'll often just save the progression into a subfolder of my clips in my user library called Chords, My Progressions, and the more organized you get, the better it is. Here's an example. So this is a chord progression in D minor that's 1, 3, 6, 7, 1, 3, 7, 6, and it sounds something like this. You can even retain a whole track, its devices, and clips by dragging it into the user library for use on future live projects. Hope you found that informative. This is Chris Gibson from Icon Collective. Thanks a lot for watching.